My first experience working on a Sonic game was with Sonic 3. Then I worked on Knights, which was a flying game. But after working on a flying game, I really wanted to work on another Sonic game, where the gameplay is much faster and on the ground. Soon after I finished working on Knights, I approached Naka-san with a proposal that we make an RPG-style Sonic game. The idea that I had in mind was to develop a simple RPG Sonic game. I wanted something bigger, on a bigger scale with a heavier emphasis on story, something that we all felt was missing from previous Sonic games. The idea eventually became the game that we now know as Sonic Adventure. When we first set out to develop a Sonic 3D game, when we figured out that we needed to take Sonic to the third dimension, we knew that we had to take Sonic to a whole new level. The first question that popped into everyone's mind was how would Sonic move if he was in 3D? This is the issue that we argued about the most. There was no game like this at the time. What was the best way to show Sonic in 3D? When we built our first test level, we knew we had to test it out, just to make sure our ideas worked. It ended up only lasting about 10 seconds, and we knew we couldn't build a game around this structure. We had to rebuild levels over and over again, until we finally had a level length that we were happy with. There was one more issue that we had to tackle, and that was the issue of the camera work. Now, normally in 3D games, the camera follows behind the character, and this is really the most basic style of camera work. But no matter what we tried, we couldn't get the same sensation of speed as the 2D games by doing this. We needed to figure out a different way to convey this sensation of speed. So, after extensive research on the matter, we discovered that the key really was in the camera system. We decided to develop a more dynamic camera system, one that showed Sonic from many angles rather than just from behind, to emphasize the speed at which he moved. We went back and implemented the camera system, and we really discovered that it made all the difference. Figuring out these two things, how to make Sonic move in a 3D environment, and what camera angles to use to emphasize his speed were our two biggest challenges. We wanted to build something nobody had ever seen before. These challenges were much more difficult than we originally anticipated, but we feel that we accomplished the goals that we set for ourselves. The homing attack was first introduced in the original Sonic Adventure game. In previous 2D Sonic games, players could easily and comfortably bounce off the heads of their enemies, and that really was part of the fun. The question was, how do you do this in 3D? That's when we thought of targeting enemies while in the air. By doing this, players can bounce off one enemy, and then target the next, and then the next, and then the next. This really allows players to enjoy the same speedy attacks they had in the 2D Sonic games in a whole new 3D world. In order to take Sonic to the third dimension, we needed several attacks and several ways to emphasize his speed. We had already thought of the homing attack, but we really didn't think this was enough. We needed one more attack, one more idea to really capture the sensation of speed. We gave it much thought, and that's when we thought of the light attack. This attack turned Sonic into a blur, really making it feel like the player is moving at Sonic speeds. We enjoyed this attack so much that we decided to make it a staple in the Sonic Adventure series, and it made a comeback for Sonic Adventure 2.